Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. first eight words of this reading strike me in the gut. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. His mother was there for all of it. For the crowd who had so recently cheered as Jesus entered the city. And now they yelled for him to be crucified. She was there when they flogged him, sending a cattail whip into the flesh of his back, and mocked him as king of the Jews with purple robe and a crown of thorns. She was there every time he stumbled, dragging the cross, carrying it on his wounded back, all the way up the hill where he would die. She was there for every scream he let out as they hammered nails into his body. She was there as the cross was raised into position. She was there for all of it. If I was in Jesus' place, the only thing that would hurt me more than my own physical pain would be seeing the pain and grief rip apart from my mother. Luckily, she wasn't alone. We're told she had not only her sister, she had Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. We're told she also had the disciple whom he loved. Five people who loved Jesus deeply were there with him through it all. It gives me comfort to know he wasn't alone, that his mother wasn't alone. He might have been alone the night before while praying, but for something like this, you can always depend on your mother to be there. Can we take a minute and pause and just say, girl power. That all, for all of those who believed in Jesus, the ones who were brave enough to stand there in their grief and make sure he wasn't alone, were four women, three of, three of which were named Mary, and one disciple. It takes absolute courage and strength to face horror and pain, to witness the suffering of someone you love when all you can do is physically be there. You can't stop it. You can't change it. But you can do the next best thing. You're there, and they are not alone. Of the twelve famous disciples, all run and hide except the one whom he loved. Which, though his name is not mentioned here, tradition holds that it was John, the, the author of this verse. When my own mother was dying, she did her best to prepare me for her death and what it would be like afterwards. She did this out of love, trying her best to make sure that I was okay. We know that Jesus tried to prepare his disciples and followers for what was about to happen. But how could Jesus prepare his mother for his death? Of all people, she probably would be the one that got it the most intellectually. But he was her son, the beloved child she held in her arms and rocked to sleep, the one whose laughter lit up her heart. She was the one he would run to when he was hurt, and when he was sick, she would hold him and comfort him. For Jesus, I would imagine the hardest part about knowing what was coming today would be to have his mother there to see it all knowing that what she saw was going to rip her heart out and shatter it into a million pieces. How can you prepare or protect your mother from this? No one at the time could hold any illusion that dying on a cross wasn't going to be awful. It wasn't the first time they had seen someone die on a cross. It probably wasn't even the first time they had known someone to die on a cross. 
Did he try and tell his mother not to come, to spare her the sight of his death? Or would he have known that was pointless? If it was my son up there, no matter how big a hole it would tear through my heart and soul, I would never leave him to face it alone. I imagine she felt the same way. What would he say to offer comfort to her? The phrase, do not be afraid, is said 300 times in the Bible. Yet I think we all know that there is no way not to be afraid for your child. Did he say, yes, this is going to be awful, but remember, this is not the end of my story. I will rise from the dead in three days. Still, even though she knew he was going to rise from the dead, to conquer the illusion of death at the end, it would never be the same again. For those dark hours while Jesus was dead, before he was resurrected, he was just gone. Gone from this earth, gone from our presence, gone from the living. I wonder if he felt gone from her heart. And I wonder if she knew even after he was resurrected, he wouldn't be able to stay with her, with the disciples like he did before. She would never physically have her son there for another birthday, another Passover. He would never be there to take care of her as she got older or comfort her in her grief. So how do you prepare to protect your mother? And how do you protect the disciples that depend on them? How do you make sure that the next few days won't break them, won't shatter their faith until you can come again? and keep your promise and rise from the dead. It may not sound like a lot of time in the grand scheme of things, but if you add it up, it was almost 48 hours where they knew for sure, the only thing they knew for sure was that Jesus was dead. Jesus knew what was coming not only for himself, he knew the grief that would descend on all those he loved. Knowing this, he did the only thing he could do to offer them comfort. He gave them to each other to take care of. When Jesus saw his mother there, the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. I don't think he ever had to worry about the women banding together to take care of each other. Women are good at that. When my own mother died, I was blessed to have three other wonderful women step in to mother me. If I were Jesus, I would feel confident that these beloved women would be there for each other. But in that time, in that world, that was not enough. A woman needed a man's protection. And there was John, a disciple whom he loved, standing there with pain in his eyes and grief in his heart. Someone that Jesus trusted, knew would do anything Jesus asked of him. Perfect. But what would happen to John in his grief? I'd like to think that Jesus could see into the future, and he knew John would need the love and support of a mother like Mary. For all the disciples turned apostles, life was going to be hard. And when life is hard, it is very helpful to have a loving mother to encourage you along the way. This was one of the best ways to honor how significant John was to Jesus. He entrusted him with the care and love of his mother. With this act, he literally made him family. And by making him family, he left John someone to love and comfort him. And she would need a new purpose a new mission in life. God gave her a sacred mission to be the mother of Jesus, God's son, to raise him in the faith, to love and protect him. Well, as much as you can protect the son of God from the world he helped create. She was his very first disciple, the one who knew him and believed in him even before he was conceived. But that mission, being his mother, ended with his last earthly breath. Jesus didn't need her as a mother anymore. It was time for a new mission. 
Still, she had love and wisdom and strength of faith to offer, and there were others who needed her as a mother. She would have a new mission now, to help those entrusted with her son's message of love, of God's love, go out into the world and to spread it. It is written that with this passage, Mary became the mother to us all, to all of us who call ourselves Christian. Thanks be to God.